Today's video, we're going to be looking at the upcoming release of the Star Ace Breakfast at Tiffany's Audrey Hepburn as Holly Golightly. Breakfast at Tiffany's was an American romantic comedy directed by Blake Edwards and loosely based on Truman Compote's novella of the same name. It starred Audrey Hepburn and George Papard, which many people will probably know as Hannibal from A-Team. The film was initially released in theaters on October 5th, 1961. The figure stands at 11.41 inches in height and is a realized six-scale figure of Holly Golightly from Breakfast at Tiffany's with both her costuming and hairstyle recreated from the first scene of the film when Holly visits her favorite Manhattan store, which happens to be Tiffany's. For display stand, Star Ace went with a very simple looking base. Now to be fair, this figure is a early copy release. So the figure actually is going to be releasing between April and June 2018. I happen to get myself an early sample copy, which would also explain why the box didn't have any print on it. It was just a white mailing box. So for the base, I'm assuming this is going to be the finalized base for what we're going to be getting with Holly, in the sense that she's not going to have breakfast at Tiffany's or anything across the board. That may likely change. Who's to say? As it currently stands right now, she comes with a just a very simple black oval-shaped display base with a waist clip at the top and the rubber feet added to the end, so it's not going to snag on the dress that she's wearing. Speaking of dresses, Holly gets herself a black silk dress. Doesn't look like it is actually silk, but it's supposed to be silk in the movie itself. It's a strapped dress that runs on the shoulders and has the bare exposed arms on the side. She also has herself a pair of arm length glove sleeves. Now, unfortunately though, one problem I have with the figure is that she does have interchangeable hands, but the hands themselves are plastic. The hands are supposed to be a continuation of the glove that runs up the full length of her arm while till about past the elbow. But this is supposed to be the fabric that's going to run all the way down to the hands themselves. I wish that they could have found some way to use the same material, as it would be difficult. I know that the, the hand is casted in plastic, but one problem is it does leave a gap in between the hands that you're changing out and the rest of Holly's sleeve, the glove that she, she wears. But also, it's a very stark contrast of materials, one being fabric, the other one being plastic. The only other thing that's visible on her outfit is her high heel shoes, which are actually a very low heel on these particular shoes. Simple in their design. Uh, the shoes are not removable. They are attached to her feet. I can move the dress slightly up so you can see how everything gets connected together. The heels, or the feet rather, I should say, that have the heels attached to them work on hinges, the same sort of hinges that we would see with other figures. So you get a range of motion with the feet themselves, both an ankle pivot. You can also move these back and forth as well. Simple, again, yes, in their design, but effective nonetheless. For the head sculpt, it features an authentic likeness of Audrey Hepburn as Holly Go Lightly. Each one of these exquisite looking heads is hand painted and they've really done a bang up job on this. 
You can even see as well that she is featuring, well, not only the tiara up at the top there, but she also has herself a pair of diamond earrings as well, which shimmer. It looks like they've favored more so just a almost chrome metallic sort of earring, so it doesn't quite resonate as much as an, a, a diamond would, but it still really looks fantastic. I can only hope that the camera does justice to this head sculpt because not only is the head sculpt really nicely done, but also the paint that they've done to the face itself. Kept it very simple as it does in the movie, but you can see that there's this nice airbrushing of almost a rosier color around the cheek area, defining that, around the areas of the nose, and on the interior areas around the eyes. Nice work on the eyes as well. They've painted in not only lower eyelashes, but upper eyelashes as well. There's some additional eyeshadow added too, and there's a sheen added to the eyeballs themselves. So when you tilt the figure, you can see that they slightly glisten as well. For her hair, she sports it up mostly up in a bun. She has a few bangs on the front of her hair, but the majority of her hair has been pulled back tightly into a bun. In fact, the sculpting is, to their credit, so good, you can see how it's been tied up. It almost looks like you could unravel the hair if you wanted to. Mixed amongst the medium shades of brown, you've got some nice dark chestnut browns that have been added in there as well. The lower area of the hair gets more the darker brown, whereas the, the areas in the bun get more treated to the lighter browns. To complete her look from the beginning of the film, you also would want to display her with this. She includes a pearl necklace with diamond pendant in the middle, which shares the same paint, the same similar paint to that of the tiara feature on her head. To add this to the figure, you're going to want to simply grab the head and take it off the neck area. Mindful though, when you are doing this, you don't accidentally snag on these earrings. You don't want to be popping those off by mistake. Go ahead and pop off the head. One thing you also will notice too, taking the head off, that the ball joint inside, being that these are this is a rubber cased bodysuit uh, for her figure, so like you're not going to see any visible articulation hinges uh, or sockets on this particular figure. The Marilyn Monroe also featured the same similar type of body, but as a result of it, you're getting a very strong metal post uh, replacing the otherwise plastic uh, ball joint that you would normally get on these figures. So we go ahead and put the pearl necklace on top. Sits very nicely on her shoulders. And then we'll go ahead and replace the head. Yeah, go back to the body here. The body is a rubber and a rubber overlay. So you've got your joints inside the rubber bodysuit, but everything is concealed, everything is hidden. It's good because you don't necessarily, you're not seeing any hinges. It makes it look for a more seamless design. Um, still though, it doesn't feel like the figure is limited or hindered by her posability. I feel like I can still get a full range of motion, say for in her elbows, for example. I can move her arms out. You're still going to be limited to the standpoint that you're not going to be able to move the arms too far forward as it's going to start adding stress to, uh, to the actual uh, joint that's inside. But otherwise, I do feel like I'm not limited by what I can do with the figure, both in her arms and her legs. Now granted, her legs are going to be a little bit of a different story because her legs are encased underneath the silk dress here. One of the additional accessories that she comes with as well is a pair of sunglasses, which we can tuck right over top of her nose, sit on the bridge of the nose, and we can put the, the, back, port, the back parts of the glasses right behind the ears. They just sit very, very easily. The glasses do sit on pretty good, actually. Although I have to admit, though, in the movie, it seems as if you have you can't see her eyes as well as you do here. Instead, they opted for more of a smokier, translucent plastic. I feel like they could have almost even darkened that slightly still. Completing the initial look, she also comes with a white scarf, which at the beginning of the movie, she's kind of more or less draping it over top of her arm. It's long enough that you may want to make several runs at wrapping it around her arm. Or what I also did at the beginning of this review, I took the scarf and I just I kind of folded it up a couple of times just to kind of reduce the length of it. And then from there, I could wrap it around her arm maybe once, possibly even twice, depending on how you want to display her. 
The figure also comes with a purse. The purse cannot be opened, instead just a sculpted piece of plastic, which you can either drape over her arm, or you can also have in between her fingers, just attaching it like so. To get it actually on her arm, if you want to go that route, it would probably be best and easiest for you to take the hand off first, then slide the purse up onto her arm, and then revisit the hand. And again, you can just kind of have the, the purse sitting like that. Like though, what I had mentioned at the beginning of this review, the only downside though is the glove material here, while it is a real fabric, it does kind of abruptly stop and you're immediately treated to a plastic hand. I can't even think of how I would have changed this differently. I mean, in fact, she does come with several interchangeable hands. We'll look at those in a second. I don't know how difficult this would have been, but I almost would have considered or would have hoped that they could have made the the glove kind of encapsulated in fabric and then you would have to slide it onto her arm and then attach the hand but it would still be the same continuation of fabric now she only has she only has a like additionally four hands above and beyond these ones right here that we're looking at they could have almost even reduced the number of hands to maybe two each two for each hand and given the treatment of having the fabric over top of the hand as well. It's really a nice look for displaying Holly, but I find the only thing that she is lacking of is she's missing the accessories of uh, the baked goods, the, uh, the pastry that she's eating at the beginning of the movie, and also that cup of, I think it's coffee or so. I'm surprised actually that they left both of those off as possibilities for additional accessories. She comes with some pretty other, some pretty cool other accessories, don't get me wrong, but I think if I'm wanting to capture the beginning of how she looks in the beginning of the movie when she's kind of doing her window shopping, she's already got really her scarf, and she's got a purse, which I think this, the purse is on the same arm as the scarf, but I would have also included the the little bag of, of the pastry, and I would have given her the coffee, which I think would have worked really nicely for displaying the figure. Don't get me wrong though, she does come with some pretty cool accessories though. She comes with the table, so we can just kind of move her over to the side. She comes with the table, which is basically when you get it out of the packaging, I'm just gonna pop this off, it comes in two parts. It comes with the, the length, the, the actual, I guess the stem of the table and the bottom of the table, and then it comes with the glass top. So you're just gonna peg that into place like so. And then she also comes with the stool or the seat that she's sitting on when she's sitting at the table. And this, in this instance, is a solid plastic. It's got some nice texturing to it, and I do like the sculpting of it. Ultimately, though, you're going to be covering both of these. Yes, yeah, you're going to be covering it with some of these fabric sheets. In fact, I feel like the fabric, it's similar. This one's slightly a little bit more cream color than the scarf that she's she's wearing here. But you just take it and just drape it like you would normally drape a tablecloth. So that would just run over top of the plastic table. I do wish though that the bottom of the table was a little bit wider so it would be less, less inclined to knock itself over. There's also a smaller one that you can drape over top of the stool. And when you've got the desired look you may want to just kind of make a couple of little folds and stuff to it. And you've got yourself now a seat and a table where she can sit. We'll go ahead and move the table back and we'll move the chair back. I thought it would be a more difficult feat to get her to bend her legs and sit properly on the on the chair. And actually, not, not that bad at all. Yes, you're going to be, in, as a result, because the, the two legs are wrapped inside the, the dress, they're going to stay pretty close together. But if you move the legs just slightly up, just kind of keep working, getting that bend going there, and then just start bending the knees. Now, keeping in mind, the joints are inside. If I can show you here, it's not the easiest, mind you. Just want to show you the inside here. The joint is inside, encap encapsulated essentially in this, this rubber bodysuit. Despite that, though, you can still get a good bend happening in the legs. You just kind of keep bending everything. There we go. 
and I want to straighten out her legs. Bring the, the chair over, bring the table over, and you can rest her very, very comfortably. There we go. Onto the, the chair itself. At the beginning of this review, what I wanted to do was capture that image of her with her arm kind of bent um, at the, uh, I guess it's used in the poster and stuff like that, where she's got the arm bent and she's kind of resting her head against her arm. This is a little on the trickier thing to accomplish because you have to just kind of keep bending the arm. You don't really get quite a head leaning and resting itself against the hand. And then you can bend the other arm up. There we go. Just keep getting everything all lined up here. This will also hold the cigar that we'll look at in a second. You can bend it like this and then sit her in the chair. Now, one thing though, you can't, you can't get the arm up to her head and get the table up to her elbow. To accomplish that, I did actually cheat. I used uh, I used just like a little display the display bottom from uh, uh, from another figure, and uh, to accomplish that, if I don't knock the figure over, I can't essentially move the arm, nor can I move the the head down. So in this instance, I'm just kind of bringing the table up, and just you know just keep bringing the figure forward. You may have to ultimately put the table kind of in between her legs. Adjusting the tablecloth while you're doing that. Yes, like I said, with enough with enough things underneath the table, you can bring the table high enough to get her arms slightly sitting on it and still resting against her head. And then the only thing we would need to do from there is add her cigarette. So Holly gets her cigarette holder. When I got this out of packaging, when I got this out of the box, this hand actually right here came with the cigarette and it was attached via um, a very small amount of glue. Since opening it and since taking out of the packaging and putting it in her hand and stuff like that, I have noticed that the glue has come loose, causing the cigarette therefore, therefore to, uh, to also be loose. I could simply just glue it back into her fingers you can still get the cigarette to hold into her hand between her thumb and her pointer finger. It's a little harder to do it, mind you, because you're not, it's not glued in place. But you can still get her to hold the cigarette in her hand. By the way, as well, the table with tablecloth and the chair with cloth are only available in the deluxe version of this, of this figure. Uh, if you just get the standard release, Holly, then she's only going to come with the cigarettes, the purse, and the glasses. Rounding out the rest of her accessories, she comes with a series of interchangeable hands. She comes with a pair of relaxed palms. One is currently in the socket. The other one would be ideally over here. I've just still got her with the cigarette holding, cigarette holder hand uh, in the other socket. So she would come with the cigarette holding hand, a, a pair of relaxed palms, and then three slightly varied to one another, but slightly kind of closed fist hands, ideally maybe for holding the purse, and uh, then she's got another one as well. They're, they are very identical to one another. In fact, if you look at, let's grab these similar hands here, they're not that much different from one another. Ideally, I would favor maybe the relaxed palms, the cigarette holding hand, and maybe one of these hands I would I would take, and the other two I probably would have swapped these out for something like the baked, you know, the the uh, the baked good that she's eating at the beginning of the movie, and the cup of coffee. I favored I would much more favor those I think than these extra hands here. By the way, well, when you are replacing the hands, the hand sockets are similar to that of the neck. You can't actually get any sort of posability happening here 
because it's just a metal studded uh, ball joint. It's attaching itself to the rubber body, similar to what we had in the neck here. So changing out the hands is extremely easy, but you're not really getting, you're not getting much in the way of a hinge back and forth, only really more so a rotation. Okay, so Holly Go Lightly's articulation is the following. Her head rotates all the way around and you get a hinge up and down. You can all technically really get a hinge back and forth as well if you want to have her head slightly on an angle. Shoulders, like we've already discussed, are the, the whole body is in a rubber frame. So the shoulders hinge out. I would say only really to about there. This figure also didn't come with also any uh, instructions. So I'm kind of basing my, my feelings of of the bend here based on other figures that I've had in my collection uh, that have rubber frames. So I wouldn't I wouldn't bend it maybe the arms any further out than a 45 and equally so I wouldn't bend the arms too far out, forward and back either. She does have as you can see here though a double hinge on the elbow and as we were looking with the hands the hands really only technically rotate. You can hinge them yes back and forth but as you're doing that the hands may likely fall and come right out of the ball joints here. Um, she has what looks to be a waist swivel and up and down crunch happening as well. This whole, again, this whole section here is all rubber. They are, as you could probably guess, limited by the nature of the way that she's inside the dress like this. So the legs only can really go out to about there. They can get forward and back motion slightly and a bend at the knee. As we had already looked at, you can still bend the legs completely to the extent where you can have her sitting down if you get the, the deluxe version that comes with the chair and the table. Finally, when it comes to her feet, her feet rotate all the way around and you've also got the hinge back and forth. Not much though in the way of an ankle pivot. I really want to thank Staries for allowing me the chance to get an early copy release here of Holly Go Lightly. Uh, she is, like I said, going to be slated for an April to June of this year, two, uh, 2018 release. So she should start shipping in the next several months. Um, you can currently pre-order her at some locations. And I think the deluxe version is going to be going for a little over $300. Deluxe version, like I said, is going to come with the table, the chair, and the cloths for both. Um, if you don't get the deluxe version, she's going to come with the glasses, the purse, the scarf, the interchangeable hands and uh, the uh, the pearl necklace there as well. It's a really nice looking, beautiful representation here of Audrey Hepburn as Holly Go Lightly. I think everything came together quite nicely on the figure. And I think if you had told me that she was gonna come with a rubber framed suit, I would have been a little apprehensive about that, but I think now physically having it in hand and kind of getting a chance to kind of move the arms and stuff around, I don't feel like she's limited, nor do I think I, nor do I really feel like I'm worried that anything is going to break on the figure. Like she feels really secure. Um, in fact, that the only nitpicks I can make about the figure are not necessarily about her frame nor the head sculpt. If anything, I would say is the uh, is the plastic of the hand versus the cloth of the rest of the uh, of the glove there. Maybe if they had found some way to incorporate fabric, not sure. Maybe they could have glued fabric to the plastic hand so it was a continual seamless transition from the hand to the rest of the glove I think could have really gone a long way. I, I like the interchangeable hands but for the nature of the fact that they're supposed to be part of a glove you can see a big gap between where the hand stops and the rest of the glove starts and of course the the two mediums the two different materials used are very different from one another. Um, other than that, I, I'm really, really happy with how the figure turned out. She could have, yes, come with maybe like the baked goods and the and the coffee that she has at the beginning of the movie. I think that's as iconic as everything else that came with this figure. But for what we got and for how beautiful the, the sculpt is on this piece, it's a really nicely done uh, showpiece from the folks over at Star Ace. Like I said, this one currently is now, uh, it's a pre-order, so she's not available just yet. But hopefully fans of... Uh, you know, Breakfast at Tiffany's will probably want to pick this one up and add it to their collection. Today, though, we were having a look at an upcoming release from Star Ace. This was the Star Ace Audrey Hepburn as Holly Go Lightly. And this was, by the way, the deluxe version that came with the table and the chair. If you guys want to also check out some other Star Ace uh, figure reviews that I've done on this channel, there's a Star Ace playlist. You can go back and have a look at those videos and watch at your viewing pleasure. 
And if you guys also haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. More videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.